All right, um, Doc. Just want to thank you for taking the time to talk with with the viewers today. Um, and I've already sent you the questions, so you have had a chance to take a look at them. But we'll just go down the list. I know you're tied up for time, and I don't want to take up a bunch of time. And we're going to be dealing with the cafeteria rush and plates clanging around. So um, we'll go ahead and get started with this. Um, I want to give me a little bit about your medical background. Yeah, it's actually not, not medical per se. I'm actually a PhD in psychology, um, and I have a specialty in what's called neuropsychology and also in rehabilitation psychology. So as a result, a lot of my work with, this, with, with patients who have brain injuries or strokes. Okay. All right, what role do you feel you play in your patient's recovery? Um, a, a lot of what I do, I think, with my patients is to kind of help them frame their ideas in a way that allow them to work to develop and work toward goals. Um, I think a lot of times um, something like a stroke or a brain injury um, can just throw people so off course uh, that they really have problems figuring out how to live their lives at this point. Um, so what I try to do is help them kind of get grounded and um, start working within the reality of what strengths and weaknesses their injuries have left them with. Okay, thanks. What do you think is the most common misconception about stroke recovery? Uh, that it stops. Uh, I think that when people think about stroke recovery, and I think it's, it's, a, it's sometimes a missed message that they hear from their doctors that I don't think is what the doctors are really telling them, um, is that stroke recovery stops after a couple of years, and that's kind of what you're left with. Um, stroke recovery, brain injury recovery, they, they go on for one's whole life. Uh, they, they never stop. In the same way that if you never had a stroke, you would continue to grow, you would continue to learn new skill sets, continue to progress. That's really what we're talking about post-stroke as well, that you may have a different set of strengths and weaknesses than you used to have, uh, but the progress never has to stop. Okay. What do you see as the most common mistake that stroke patients make in rehab? Uh, I think the, the, probably the most common mistake is, is comparing, trying to compare themselves too much to who they were and how they functioned before their stroke. Um, it is a different path that you're on after you attain a stroke and you have to redefine how you're going to work on your life with your new sets of strengths and weaknesses. Okay. Okay, I got a hypothetical question for you. Mm -hmm. This is kind of based on some um, threads that I've seen on some stroke recovery support groups on Facebook. Uh, what would you say to someone that is having stroke symptoms but avoids going to the emergency room for fear of a high medical bill? Yeah, that's one of those things that, you know what, I absolutely, it's the same issue that people who have to take medications for um, with a high medical cost. There are times where, in my opinion, you really have to say, I just have to put the costs on hold, and what I have to do is make sure that I'm not having some major medical issue at this point. If you get early treatment, if you recognize stroke signs right away, there's different aspects they can do to treatment that might alleviate some of the symptoms, might minimize some of the symptoms, and in the long run may end up allowing you to produce more income or save you money in terms of uh, care or in terms of other types of medical needs. So if you put it in the big picture, a lot of times getting yourself evaluated and treated early can end up saving a lot of money as opposed to costing you more. Sure, sure. Okay, um, what do you see as the biggest obstacle for stroke patients in rehab? Uh, I think it's really the definition of goals, being able to keep your goals moving forward. Uh, I think there's a tendency sometimes uh, when someone hits a plateau, either for therapists or for the, 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 the patient themselves, to start saying, well, you know what, what's the point, there's nothing else to work for, things along those lines. Um, and it's being able to make sure that you're continuously always thinking toward what can I do next. Now, it's, it's not only in terms of developing goals, it's developing goals that you can actually keep working and attaining. So that you're always thinking forward, but you're thinking forward in steps that you can manage. Okay. What do you see as your biggest success? Uh, my, without question, my clients. Um, I, th I think that um, I, I always like to think that when I'm working with a client that what we're doing is we're developing a team and that this team is, is the goal of the team is to manage oneself, to learn to manage oneself with a stroke or 
in areas where we could, I like to sometimes define, let's beat the stroke, let's, let's go at this and really learn to, to understand that you are not the stroke, you're bigger than the stroke, um, and working people along those lines. Okay. Um, what do you see as your biggest motivator to continue on with what you do? Um, again, my, my, my clientele. Um, I don't think, in, in the different populations I work with, I don't think I work with a harder working, more motivated group than people who have strokes and brain injuries. Um, and when you consider the fact that, that's, that it, it often changes in many respects how somebody sees themselves to the core, uh, that's pretty inspiring to me, is to understand and to know that these people have a let's figure this out and work through it and get myself back in charge type of mentality. Sure, okay. What do you say, what, do you, what changes do you think need to be made for the future of stroke rehab? Um, I, I think it's, well, some of them are going to be medical, uh, clearly, as they come up with new medications and new technologies to treat. Um, but as far as kind of the, the, the psychological changes, I think it's really creating a set of goals um, and keeping focused on those goals. I think it can be hard, especially some types of strokes make it very hard to see the big picture uh, and integrate steps into a big picture. Um, so it's helping people do that in order to be able to keep forward progress going. But I think a lot of it is that whole mentality that the stroke treatment doesn't end after a period of time, but is a lifetime type of process. Okay, thank you. Uh, what excites you the most about your future in stroke rehab? Uh, to be honest, it's keeping working with the people I'm doing. It's, it's, it's what gets me up in the morning and what gets me to work and what gets me through the day. A lot of people wonder, how do I not burn out doing you know, eight to 10 hours a day talking to people? Uh, it's because you guys are inspiring. Okay, here's a spontaneous kind of loaded <laughs> question, okay? Um, which patient is your favorite that you've ever had? <laughs> <laughs> you mean besides Paul Price? <laughs> um, yeah. So. Um, yes, no, I, um, I've been yeah. inspired by so many and I like so many of my patients. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do not find it hard to connect. I look for ways to connect to people. So I don't think it's like a parent saying, I don't want to put myself in a parental role here, but when you hear a parent say, I have no favorite child, um, it's a similar type of thing. I really have no favorite client. I like my clients for who they are mm -hmm. um, and really appreciate them for who they are. And therefore it'd be very difficult for me to say, you're my favorite, you're my favorite. But you keep us in check. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's one thing you've always done. Well, I know I'm coming across as this, this, this kindly old man, but, um, but yeah, I, um, I, um, I, char I, I expect my clients to work. Um, I expect them to have goals. I expect them to understand that this is not an easy process. Um, and to rise to the challenge. Um, and those who are willing to do that do get better. Sure. Well, I have to tell you, and this is totally something that is not, you haven't seen, but I've said this to Brom. Um, I credit you with saving my life. Okay. Thank you. Program recovery here at, um, at Dulles Health and Rehab, which used to be Commonwealth Health and Rehab, program recovery saved my life because when I was at my darkest point, I came to program recovery and you kind of made me put things in perspective and inspired me. So I just wanted to let you know that I kind of credit you along with everybody else at Commonwealth with kind of saving me from me. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's really the way to look at it. You do have to be, I think sometimes patients have to be saved from themselves. Yeah, and a lot of it is helping people kind of through those early stages. And you know, this place is special in terms of that they do have this program. Um, and it takes a lot of people to get the pro keep the program going, and, and most of all, of course, it's about the residents working as a team to do this. Sure. Um, and I know, I know, in your case, you got inspiration from so many people when you were here um, that really allowed you to develop a path that's working for you at this particular point. Um, but one of the reasons I like coming here is because they really do understand that stroke patients have special needs. Um, and this is such a difficult process. It's not like breaking an arm. It's not like 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 
um, having diabetes. It's, it, this one literally changes who you are and how you see yourself sure. um, and requires a lot of support and care. And uh, the fact that this, this organization continues to support this program uh, is really inspirational to me. Okay. One last question, because I know you've got, you've got some place you've got to be, but one last question here. What advice would you give someone beginning stroke rehab or recovery? Understand that it's a uh, marathon and not a sprint. Okay, this is a long-term process. Um, you will have some periods where you're going along and everything seems to be clicking, and then you're going to have plateaus or even mild setbacks at times due to medical issues or just feeling as though it's not going anywhere. Uh, that can be overwhelming. Um, and to understand that if you keep your eye on the prize and allow yourself to work through those lows um, and keep those goals up front, you can continue to move forward the rest of your life. Great. Well, Dr. Levin, I just want to thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Um, we'll probably talk again. We may do another interview. I'd like to do an interview series with you um, down the road, but right now I just want to thank you for taking the time. I know your time is pretty valuable. Um, and I'll see you soon. You know, Paul, I love what you're doing here, and I support it however I can. So thank you so much. Thanks, Dave.